My name is Bruce Cohen, and I'm an attorney board certified in immigration and nationality law. And today I'm speaking about investor visas. There's two types of investor visas. One is the E2 non-immigrant investor visa, and the other is perhaps the more well-known EB5 investor visa. The E2 non-immigrant investor visa is for a period of anywhere from one to five years and renewable indefinitely. The length of the visa depends on your country's treaty of investment with the United States. Now, certain countries do not have treaties of investment with the United States, and therefore their citizens cannot get the E2 visa for investment. Some of those countries are India, Israel, Venezuela, Brazil. There's lots of countries that do not have a treaty of investment with the United States. On the other hand, there are many countries that do have such a treaty. Japan, France, all sorts of uh, other countries having treaties of investment with the U.S., England, Canada, Mexico. If the individual is from one of those countries, they can get the E2 investment visa. Now, there is no minimum. I'm often asked, is there a minimum investment? What's the requirement? Unfortunately, there's no bright line test. The law says it needs to be a substantial investment in a business, but the law does not define substantial. So it could be that for one business, $50,000 would be substantial, but for folks coming from Europe, my own experience is 200000 or more is probably going to be substantial. On the other hand, it could be possible that something under 200000 would qualify as substantial. So it's basically handled on a case-by-case -case basis. The other type of investment visa is the EB-5, perhaps the more well-known visa because it gets a lot of attention in the media. On one hand, most of the applicants for the EB-5, probably well over 80% of those visas go to people from China, but anyone from any country around the world can get those visas. So in order to get the EB-5 visa, there's a couple of ways of doing it. One is a direct investment of a million dollars by the individual in a new enterprise that creates at least 10 new jobs for American workers or workers with green cards or work permits. That's one way. Another way is investing $500,000 in an area that is typically a depressed area or a rural area as designated by the particular state where the investment takes place. That's only $500,000. Still needs to be a new enterprise and you still must hire at least 10 U.S. workers. And then the third, probably most popular way of getting the investor visas, $500,000 where you turn it over to a third party in a joint investment project. Now, there are lots of risks with this and I certainly always advise people to do their own due diligence before they turn over that money to the third party for one of those group investments. Our law firm, of course, helps individuals in both the E-2 and the EB-5 investment visa cases, and we've been doing these sorts of cases for 30 years plus on the E-2 non-immigrant visa investor side, and we've been doing EB-5s, of course, since the program started about 20 years ago.